Bright city lights from day to midnight break the clouds and descend from bird flight. Bright city lights. Cities have really underpinned so much of how we talk and engage as a culture. And it might seem strange to have a mechanical engineer standing up here talking about stories, but hey, that's what I'm doing. It's not just about cities as stories, though. I want to start sharing about cities as stories, the idea of story as reality, and that as an urban species, as of 2007, more than half of the people on the planet have lived in cities. We are an urban species, and so cities are our story made real. And what I want to share today is around the sort of physical vocabulary we have, the actual stuff of cities that allows us to tell better stories. The second thing, idea I want you to hold is the idea of design as magic. So as I speak, hold the idea of cities as story with a capital S and design as magic. Because when you design, and if there are, particularly designing the built environment, if there are architects or engineers out there, it's quite astounding, really. You sit around a table, you draw some lines on paper, you give it some thought, and a year to 18 months later, it's there. It's real. You can touch it. I mean, idea to pen on paper to bricks and mortar, it must be one of the closest things that we have to magic. And with that magic comes agency. But what about the, the blank page on which we tell these stories? This image both inspires and terrifies me. I mean, urbanization has happened there. Look at India, look at China. We have built the cities of the north. They exist, they are there, that infrastructure is in place, that money is spent. Look at Africa. We have not yet built the cities of Africa. Just a few stats, forgive me if it's a bit boring. By 2030, it's expected that 85% of the world's population will be in developing countries and 15% in least developed countries. An additional 2 billion urban dwellers in 20 years. Africa has the highest rate of urbanization at 5%, and that's expected to triple by 2040. And finally, by 2030, Asia and Africa will both have higher numbers of urban dwellers than any other major area in the world. So let's really look at that image now and rethink this idea of how we write the urban story. Because here, I mean, I can't imagine fitting an additional 2 billion people into our cities at the moment the way they are currently designed. So let's just understand that quickly. This amount of urbanization, coupled with the fact that these developing economies are the only countries currently growing, that means that we are going to be building new cities. And I'm sorry we didn't get to hear Paul Romer's talk, because one model for these new cities is what he was going to speak of, which is the idea of charter cities. But let's just hold that for now and know that we are going to have new cities and a new opportunity to write new stories. Unfortunately, we've told pretty poor stories to date with our cities. The infrastructure in place limits our ability to tell better stories. And if you are the real storytellers of our cities, if you are the planners, the politicians, the NGOs, you have a very limited set of options in terms of actually delivering services to people in a way that takes cognizance of issues like biodiversity loss or climate change or food security. The fact that we have such extreme poverty has quite a lot to do with the fact that the models for delivering services to those people are not up to the task. Cape Town is perhaps not just the most segregated city in South Africa. From my experience of having seen a fair few international cities, it's by quite a margin the most segregated city I have ever been in. And that segregation is enshrined in our physical infrastructure. We build roads and railways and concrete bollards to separate poor from rich, to separate neighbor from neighbor, to separate English from Afrikaans, black from colored from white. We have the Burevos Curtain. 
go, like it's completely unimaginable. And then we try and keep the hippies south of the peninsula. It's really like Cape Town is quite extraordinary in the degree to which we have segregated people. And so what we need is a new urban vocabulary. We need a new set of options for our urban storytellers to tell better stories in our city. And in a typical process, we split up design into very neat little boxes. We have civil engineers and mechanical engineers, and they all do their own little thing. And what you get is the right-sized sewage pipe, if you can afford to run it far enough, and you get the right size substation, forgetting the fact that it's effectively burning coal. And you tick the box on environmental legislation, and so your developer gets to go ahead with their project. Yay, everybody's so happy, we have development. We design intersections, and we size traffic lights and highways. We get all this through the town planning process, and we have some level of token engagement. And what we need, if we're seriously talking about future cities and the new way our cities can look, are new processes for design. And instead of just civil engineering, we can talk about future water and designing all of our water systems in an integrated way, that's water and wastewater, so that it takes account of the likely future scenarios we're going to have. Future energy, not just how big is the substation, but what are the opportunities for waste to energy, for waste from water treatment to energy, for integrated renewable energy, for smart metering? We can talk about ecology and urban ecology. We no longer just have to tick a box. We can green our cities. One of the major issues around London and the Olympics was the idea of rewilding Eastern London. And Europe is in that position now. Europe have depleted their biodiversity to the degree that rewilding is now a key policy decision. How do you rewild? I can guarantee you it is easier not to stuff it up in the first place. Instead of traffic, we can speak about mobility. We don't need to move cars. Moving cars is insane. One ton hunks of steel moving billions of kilometers a year. It's crazy. Mobility is the art of moving people and multimodal transport. And if we go into the design of our cities with those ideas, it's no longer a 50-minute commute or sitting in traffic for two hours a day. Has anyone actually thought of what it costs for 400,000 people to spend two hours a day each sitting in traffic? And I don't care what you earn. When you take that and you add it up over days and weeks and months and years and decades, the lost opportunity just from sitting in traffic, not to mention the cost for people for whom transport is such a huge part of their disposable income, is immense. And onto that, the town planning engagement, yes, it's important, but I'm holding on design here. So I'm choosing not to focus too much on process. There is huge amounts that needs to be done there, but let's just hold that for a moment new elements into the, our cities. We need to be talking about green buildings. The Green Building Council is here today and they're doing really good work in trying to make the idea of green buildings come into the mainstream in the property sector. We need to be dealing with climate change and climate change strategy. We can get to the idea of smart cities, another thing that we'd hope to cover today, but smart cities and the idea of real data and big data and understanding what's happening in your city at every moment, technically, gives you the ability to respond in good time and deliver services again in a way that they have not been thought of before. I can keep going, there's waste management and really importantly this idea of transdisciplinarity. So it's not just good enough to shift one discipline of engineering or design or architecture or urban design into a future idea, those are just words really. But the key is that A, we recognize that as designers we don't know everything and we need to get far better context than we have historically, because context, my friends, is everything. Uh, and then that even these very lines get blurred. And so by virtue of your experience of having walked down the street, you can inform the design of mobility because you have experience. And that's one of the core principles when you get into transdisciplinarity. The vocabulary of the city 2.0 requires a new way and new ways of imagining and delivering services. 
we cannot fall into the trap of simply rebranding the same failed strategies of the industrial area. Area? Era. Sorry. <laughs> and so, if I can leave you with a few key thoughts. Through design and the magic of design, we have agency to tell a better story in our cities and to give our city storytellers the vocabulary to tell better stories. Our underdevelopment means that we have a relatively blank canvas compared to other places on which to tell these new stories. So we have the agency, we have the blank canvas, and so to me that gives us both the rights and the responsibility to make some magic and begin to tell new urban stories. Thanks very much.